All right, I have a Big Daddy iPad Pro 12.9 inch here with no touch. Uh, the guys tried three different screens and they've done a bunch of these boards, but the touch stopped working after the screen replacement. So, since I've done one other one of these and I already know which uh, which filter it is, and it is this filter right here that handles the touch. So we just put your multimeter in continuity mode. It's a little blurry because this thing is way too big for my workstation and there's no continuity on this filter. So since there are no schematics for these puppies, um, you're just going to have to kind of guess as to what, what uh, the rating is on this filter. And what I what I normally do is I'm just going to use a filter from probably iPad iPad Air, if that's not big enough, which this looks like it's a little bit bigger actually, so I may I may just use the iPad Mini Mini backlight filter. So what you want to do is uh, so I've already checked for continuity on these these puppies already. This one, this is probably backlight. This is probably backlight, and this one I'm not really sure what the hell this is for, but they all have continuity except for this one. So I'm pretty sure this is probably the only problem. And my tweezers are not really straight here. It's like one is shorter than another. That's not good. Definitely need to change some tips on this puppy. Alright, this this guy's bad. You know what? I'm gonna leave it here because I don't know what size it is, so I'm just gonna You know what? I have a filter here that I took out a few days ago. I don't even know what it is, but let's see if it's the same size. Nope, that's too big. So this actually looks like probably oh, I lost that thing. Anyways, this looks like actually a 6S backlight filter so I'm just gonna use the it's a three it's rated at 350 milliamp years it's a 0201 and 240 ohmer so that is what I'm gonna do and I hope that's the correct one This actually looks kind of small, and I don't think it is actually. Let me double check. Is that the right size? Yep, that's the right size. All right, so that's what that's what we're gonna use. It's gonna be a 350 milliampere, 240 ohmer, 0201. And let me, let me get rid of this one first before it gets lost somewhere. You can get a little flux on it. Just a little bit of flux. Uh oh. Do my components stick to my thing here? Dang it. I think I lost it. Boy, that sucks. I gotta get another one out because I lost it. Should probably tin it. Okay. So let me tin these suckers just a little bit. There it is tinned. I'm gonna clean my tip off.
I really don't have enough room to do these. <laughs> Because these things are massive. All right, so that is that. And uh, I got a phone call. All right, hold on. All right, so I just went ahead and reassembled the whole thing uh, because I took the phone call and I was pretty much done with the, the soldering of the filter. And as you can see, this mother powers up. This thing is so big, man. Uh, can you even see this thing? No. All right. Anyways, I'll just do this. All right, and you can see that it works touch works again alright so if you ever have a problem with the touch screen not working after a screen repair um, it's most likely that filter um, check that filter first make sure it's continuity and then go to the I have another video that shows uh, the, the solder connections uh, for the daughter board which usually it doesn't result in no touch it results in a dead line or a dead spot on the screen usually line um, so anyways, I'm actually going to continue on with this video. Uh, I'm going to do another video, actually, and I'm going to do di diode mode readings on the connector. So that way I know what's going on next time, because there's no schematics for these things out there. So diode mode is going to be the best, best solution. So anyways, for this video, we're done.